welcome back to another round of Black Pattern Meeting Shooting. Today we're going to talk about the difference between the percussion and the flints. So let's hear from the percussion crowd. They love those guns. How about the flint crowd? Today we're going to load them both up with various levels of powder and see what it's going to take to knock these rascals over. Remind everybody, ear and eye protection is strongly recommended. So if you're brand new to black powder shooting, that's kind of the reason I like to put these videos together, is to hopefully entertain the ones that shoots all the time, and also gives a little bit of knowledge to the brand new shooters. So what's the difference between the percussion and the flintlock guns? Well, for the most part, the guns are exactly the same, except for the barrel lengths, they may be a little bit different, and these two are 50 calibers, but the main difference is the ignition source. The percussion gun needs a little cap, usually a number 11 cap, to go on the end of there, and when you pull the trigger, it sets the fire off inside the gun and makes it work. The flint gun uses a little rock, like this one here you see, and you put powder in this little pan, and the spark from the gun is what makes it go off to make the main charge go off. So let's load them both up and see what we can do with them about spanking those pins down there. Well, the pretty cool thing about using the firearms I have is every one of them I own except for a 44 caliber revolver and a 62 caliber smoothbore are all 50 calibers. That makes my life real simple. I take this patch out with me in the woods. I have it loaded with all the accessories I need. A primer for the flintlock print and a capper for the percussion gun. So I can take any of those guns out and shoot them all day long with one pouch because I like to keep my life simple and don't have to deal with a whole lot of different pouches and all this kind of thing. So I have a 30 grain charge here. The reason why it goes back to the set a minute ago is I use the same horn to shoot pistols with also. And 30 grains is the most to put in them. So I put 30 into this one and 30 more, which makes 60 grains of Swiss 3F, which is most shooters use pillow ticking material. This one's 14 thousandths of an inch, the red and white, I believe that's what it is. See later on, it costs the top of the barrel and shove the ball down in there. Now the cool thing about this particular gun is this, is a buddy of mine named Barry over in Indiana coned the end of this barrel last year. Means I could short start them because the barrel is slightly wider at the end, so I could thumb start these balls and there's no need to use a ball starter. So we get the old ramrod out and we just send it right on home. Oh, a little bit tough with that material. Ooh. Now I'm not one of these shooters that sit pounds the ball's down in there. Once it's down on the load, it's down the load. So we're going to prime this rascal here on the line and see if we can get us a spare on those pins. Before we pull the trigger, you got to prime it up. Let's talk about what we do there. The priming thing is in this little tool here. There's 4F powder, really fine powder in there. And what I'll do is I'll hit this thing about twice. It puts a little bit of powder down in the pan and pull the frizz closed and we're ready to go. Usually shoot offhand, but I'm going to use a camera box today. <laughs> Set the trigger. And how about Mr. Pink there, third one from the left? Can we do that one? We ought to be able to swing that one, shouldn't we? Gosh, <laughs> right between it. Oh. Let's show the loading sequence of the percussion gun, and then we can just sit here and plow those babies all morning long. Yeah. Before we even get started loading this rascal, you should do what we always call pop a cap. And that simply means that you will take a percussion cap with no load in your firearm and just place it on the nipple. And you point it toward a safe leaf on the ground or, or a little four leaf clover or whatever you want to do and you simply pull the trigger. And that way it clears out the channel. 
so that when you do load it up, all the oils or ballast oil or whatever you used from the previous cleaning is cleared out and the gun will fire. Use the same Swiss powder for this particular gun. Percussion guns like Swiss, this one does especially. So put 30 grains in that little short barrel and 30 more. I always cap that horn to keep things safe. The pilling ticking material, we'll use that again. Oh my goodness. Mm, woo. Oh baby. This particular percussion gun requires a little cap. And we'll have a little caps inside of here. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. They're pretty tiny. Oh baby, look how little that thing is. And what it does is it fits right on the end. I'll pull that back a little bit. Right on the end of the nipple as such. So right now the gun's in half cock. It means it won't work if your gun's working properly. But I pull it back one more notch, we are totally hot. Let's see if we can knock off a pin with this rascal. How about old Pinky? Can we get him again? I love it. How about it, Mr. Green? Can we get it? Yes! How about the blue and the pink one? That in the middle of those three groups. Get it, Mark? Oh, well. All right, Mr. Flint Gun. How about the two on the left? Can we get them? Close, but that don't count except in horseshoes, right? We tried 30 grains in the other gun. Let's see what we can do with 30 in this one, but the other pair. <laughs> Little flint gun come through. <laughs> Let's see if we get us a strike with 80 grains of Swiss 3F. Let's do it. that percussion gun in the same way. Oh, I think I see a strike coming if I can hit that head pin. <laughs> How about a little reverse bowling? Can we do that? Love it. <laughs> yes, so I went down. I'm gonna get the one in the back and not the one in the front. See if I can keep the two in the front standing. Ooh, there's only about two inches between them. Is that possible? <laughs> yes! Ooh, baby! Can hit the table this time? Make a mofo? Oh, that would be pretty cool. Oh! Well, there you go, my friends. Other than the loading sequence, which is the same for both firearms, it takes a powder patch and ball where it won't shoot at all. The famous phrase I have a lot of the folks sing to me when they do it in any other kind of order than that, it won't work. But you can tell from looking that it's basically the same type of firearm, just a different type of ignition. One's based on 1700s technology and one's based on 1800s technology. So which one's easier to shoot? I'm gonna leave that for you to decide. Meanwhile, there are other ways to knock these rascals over. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it happen. Yeah. Yes! I love it! <laughs> Thanks for watching. And remember, Jesus does love you. And we'll catch you next week. And by the way, it's a Get into that black powder hobby if it's the first time you've watched one of these videos. You will not regret it. We'll catch you next Sunday. <laughs> My board broke too, man. Oh. <laughs> we'll see you next time.